Hi, this is Jack Diamond with the Who Likes Short Shorts Film Festival, and I'm sitting down with Mark Pittman, the screenplay writer for Roya, which won uh, second overall in our Spring 2011 Film Festival. Mark, uh, it's good to have you here. So now I know that uh, Roy was actually your first screenplay, but that's not uh, the first time that you've actually been involved in uh, filmmaking in general. Sure, I actually uh, started in film in some form uh, when I was on an aircraft carrier uh, filming the morning debriefings for the air crew, uh, for the air wing on the, the ship. Um, I was uh, helping with sound at that time and then I got into writing as an intelligence specialist. And so my roots to writing and working with film do stem back to the early 80s, but uh, it didn't really funnel uh, until about a year and a half ago into independent film. I know that working in the military must have given you uh, some, some background on that. Uh, can you give us a little bit more uh, exposition on that process and what you pulled from? Any personal experiences? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I spent 10 years as an intelligence specialist in the military. Um, I spent time in an aircraft carrier uh, with a squadron and even though I didn't see any actual uh, combat, uh, being out there is an experience that unless you've been there, then you haven't been there. And uh, Roya, I drew the letters from home. Um, when they're sharing letters, um, when you're out at sea for a long period of time, mail call could be, you know, five, six weeks apart and you still may not get any letters from home. And the people that did, after they read their letters, they would actually let other people read their mail just so that they weren't left out. They could feel connected. Feel connected. I mean, pictures, the whole entire letter and all, just so that you could you know, feel that you, what you were doing out there was worthwhile and that there were still people out there. Well, and that's what I, I loved about the, um, uh, one, one of the moments in Roya that uh, when they were sharing letters and mm -hmm. pictures, um, it was even with the person they had captured. Yeah. Right. That came from uh, when I was in Singapore in the early 1980s. Um, as an intelligence specialist, the USSR at the time was our arch enemy, and Singapore is actually a neutral port. And I was in a bookstore buying an English uh, Russian dictionary, and a guy behind me was just sort of acting funny and sort of fidgety, and I realized that he was a sailor from a Soviet warship of some kind, and here I am, an American from an American warship. And um, he would kept pointing at my hand, and I had changed from you know purchasing what I had done, and um, uh, he uh, kept pointing at my hand. So I gave him a quarter, and he just went ecstatic. He kept flipping it over in his hand, and so on. And finally, he handled, handed me a five ruple coin. Huh. And you know, here we are, you know, supposedly arch enemies, and just had this shared this you know no borders, no wartime moment with this guy that I never saw you know again. The moment that I combined with the letter writing and Roya was when they shared the German's letter with them and mm -hmm. they both connected there. They realized that they just wanted to go back home just, just like the, the Americans did and the yeah. German did. Well, m and most war movies are shoot 'em up, you know, right. and, and this is uh, definitely a different take on that. Right. Uh, you know, what I loved about it was, like you said, there are no borders, we're the same people, mm -hmm. but they were not in a bookstore. Um, from taking my personal experiences, you still have to realize that, you know, when I was on an aircraft carrier, I was 50 miles off the coast of Iran at times during, you know, American hostages that were taken at the embassy there. I was still in danger. And sometimes you sort of forget that. And sort of a backstory uh, that wasn't filmed with Roy is that uh, Ronnie and uh, the sergeant were essentially supply clerks and uh, their uh, convoy was ambushed. They weren't field soldiers. They didn't know what to do with a prisoner of war when they got to them. That's why they didn't have backpacks. That's why they didn't have, you know, um, you know, but one rifle between the two of them. They didn't know what to do. They were just average guys doing their job, and next thing you know, they're in the middle of a war. Is there anything looking back that from the script to the screen that you wish you would have been able to keep or that you felt that really, uh, you know, kept throughout uh, uh, that you enjoyed, that it was still in there? I think the pieces were still there. Um, James Colley, the director, is really good at making the, the viewer feel visually from his visual work, and I'm better at making the, the moviegoer feel from what's said between the characters. And so we, we really complement each other when we work with film. I'm all about the dialogue and the talking, and he's all about the visual part of the, the filmmaking process. The only other thing that I added was the scene where um, Ronnie is given the rifle and he joined the military to avenge his brother's death. He has a German on his knees right in front of him and he still can't pull the trigger. 
that uh, when you're in the military, you know, you have these guns and weapons and so on, but uh, we're still just, you know, people that want to go back home. And, um, you know, Ronnie couldn't, you know, pull the trigger, as I said, when it came time to do it. You know, there was, uh, I was talking to uh, Danny James, which is one of the actors in the film, and uh, he said that um, there was a, a part in the film where they were sharing a cigarette, and uh, Ronnie was coughing, and he kind of laughed, and they said that that originally wasn't necessarily part of what needed to be shot, but it was part of B-roll, and they liked it, and, and right. put it in. James uh, uh, liked it. Um, did you have any, uh, in, any say in, in those moments? I know you were on set, and this was your story being told. That, were you able to kind of craft those moments or find moments on set and said, you know what, this, this needs to be told this way, or I like that? Actually, there was a second one um, that was added, and it's the line when uh, the German soldier says, uh, it's better this way. You realize that he understood English the entire time he was held captive. That was asked to me by Thomas McMahon, who played the German, if he could add that, and I said, go for it. Uh, it was actually really chilling when you, you see that. There were just you know, circles within circles. I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, speaking of in enjoying, how much did you enjoy working with uh, James Colley, or not? And remember, this is being filmed, so he might see this. Working with James Colley, um, I was really lucky to meet him. Um, he and I worked together at a software company where I wrote uh, scripts for a teleprompter for training films and he was the cinematographer and just one day he asked me if I'd ever written a screenplay and I said you know no I'd never thought of stage or whatever in all my writing endeavors and he said well, if I give you a scenario would you write one just for the heck of it and I said okay so he gave me like a two minute encapsulated uh, version of Roya and I went home and wrote and gave it back to him the next day and I waited for like six weeks and he didn't say a word so I thought it was in the shredder and you know he was like well oh, thanks, no, that didn't go yes. anywhere I finally asked him, you know, whatever happened to it, and he told me that he'd already shown it to the directors of photography, which were Rhett and Burke Lewis, and that uh, auditions were the following month. And so I was in shock, there you go. and yeah. things have just been crazy working with James ever since. Well, and I know that you and James have a couple of projects uh, that you're uh, looking to shoot in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know much more about that other than I know that you are working with them. Are you uh, planning on being able to pull from those experiences again? Or are you nervous that even as a script writer, you may not have uh, the necessary background or experience to flesh out these concepts? Um, I've been really lucky to work with James, uh, for one. Second is just my uh, writing background and what little radio and TV background that I do have, I've been able to bring that together. And I've jumped you know, on the train while it was already running, so to speak. And from what I can tell, you know, I'm keeping pace with James as best I can. But uh, from what I can tell, um, you know, I'm on target with what James is looking for for a screenplay writer for his films. All right. Well, can you give us any, uh, any teasers of the, the names of the spec scripts that you guys are looking at producing? Um, I can tell you that we're jumping um, into the um, uh, full feature realm. When are you planning on starting the production on that, or have um, you already started? We've already started. Oh, okay. Any other uh, short films that you've got going as well, or is this going to take up the bulk of your time? For the next I do um, do some projects on my own outside of James, and I'm working on a short film right now that I will uh, premiere at the Falls uh, Festival. Oh, all right. Well, then we'll look forward to seeing that. For more information about Mark Pittman and the projects coming up, as well as uh, all of the new films that we're premiering in this Fall Festival, go to welikeshortshorts.com. Thanks.